is here to help you maximize your learning about the vector addition of velocities. Now here's the setup. Here's the boat. Here's the camera. And here's the river. Notice that only physics men can walk on water. To demonstrate the river current, we put these little floats in the river. As you can see, the little floats are moving downstream with the river current. And you know why these uh, markers on the side are not floating with the current? That's because they're magic markers. Now, as the boat goes upstream and downstream and then across the stream, the speed of the motor will be held constant so that the velocity of the boat through the water will be constant. In the first scene, the boat will be moving upstream and the velocity of the boat through the water plus the velocity of the water downstream will give the resultant velocity of the boat as seen by the camera on the bridge. Now, as the boat travels upstream, let's time it as it goes past these markers here. Notice how slowly the boat seems to be moving. I got 10.11 seconds. Now we'll time the boat as it goes downstream. Notice how much faster it seems to be moving relative to the camera on the bridge. I got 3.67 seconds. Now the boat is going to aim perpendicular to the current. And as it goes straight across the stream, the current is going to carry it down the stream. Notice that the boat is aimed towards the east, and that the current to the south is making the boat move in a southeasterly direction. Okay, now let's pretend there's a waterfall and the boat doesn't want to drift over the waterfall. The, the driver has to aim upstream in order to cancel out the velocity of the current in order to go straight across the stream. Now, in order to move due west, straight across the stream, the boat has to be aimed a little bit north of west so that the velocity of the boat partially cancels out the velocity of the stream and the boat moves straight across the stream. Now the boat is from bow to stern, it's 16 feet long. And uh, the time that we got for going upstream was 10.11 seconds, and the time for going downstream was 3.67 seconds. I want you to use those times and, and the length of the boat and solve for the speed of the boat and the speed of the water uh, using simultaneous linear equations. Then, once you know the velocities of both the boat and the water, then you can find out, as it ends straight across the stream, what angle it really traveled with respect to the bridge, and what angle you'd have to aim the boat up the stream in order to go straight across the stream. That's your homework, and Physics Man certainly hopes that you'll have fun doing it. To find the resultant velocity, the red vector, of the boat going upstream and the current going downstream, divide the distance traveled 16 feet by the time required 10.11 seconds. To find the resultant velocity, the, the red vector going downstream, divide 16 feet by the time 3.67 seconds. Now, using simultaneous equations to find the speed of the boat and the speed of the river, you have two unknowns and two equations since you know the resultant speed upstream when the speeds subtract, hint, hint, and, the, and downstream when the speeds add, hint, hint. I got that this boat speed was a little more than two times the river speed. Now, to find the direction that the boat actually travels when aimed straight across, you want to use the tangent function. The speed of the river divided by the speed of the boat will give you angle theta 1. To find the angle at which the boat must be aimed upstream in order to counterbalance the current, you have to use the sine function. Divide the speed of the river, green vector, by the speed of the boat, the hypotenuse. Summarizing. Use trig to calculate the angle the boat goes downstream when aimed straight across. Then calculate at what angle the boat must be aimed upstream in order to go straight across. I found that theta 2 was greater than theta 1.
Extra credit. Suppose the river is one mile wide and the two boats are going to have a race, each boat traveling the same speed through the water. One boat goes one mile upstream against the current and one mile downstream with the current. The other boat aims upstream slightly to go one mile straight across and back the one mile the same way. Which boat wins? This race is analogous to the experiment that Michelson and Morley did with light, which led to Einstein's theory of relativity. Back in the 1880s, when Michelson and Morley did their famous experiment, physicists were convinced that light had a wave nature, and they postulated the existence of a luminiferous ether as the medium for light waves. The Earth is moving around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour, and that would create an ether wind or current in the opposite direction analogous to the river current for the boats. Their apparatus would sp split up a light beam so that the two beams, one parallel to the ether wind and one perpendicular to the ether wind, could race down to a mirror and back. The Michelson and Morley apparatus could detect whether or not there was a winner, and in so doing, detect whether or not there existed an ether medium for the light waves. In fact, the effect they were looking for would have actually been seven times greater because what they did not know at the time was that the sun is moving around the galaxy at 486,000 miles per hour. Hopefully you will study the Michelson and Morley experiment someday if you have not already done so, for it is considered to be one of the most significant experiments in the history of physics.